Tom here from Morton Systems, and on July 2nd of 2021, a very large-scale ransomware attack was deployed, specifically using the Kaseya VSA software, and the ransom affected roughly 1,500 businesses and 60 different IT providers, and this is why they were referring to it as a supply chain attack. So we'll get to that a little bit later in the video, but let's start with, yes, there was a $70 million ransom put on here and the Our Evil Ransomware Group and their happy blog, yes, that is what they call it, is where they post how much they want in ransom. Now, this is a pretty tragic story that actually starts not on July 2nd, of course, but with all the planning and everything that went into this attack. And I'm going to start here with Victor Somewhere this year, the DIVDNL, which is the Dutch CERT organization, will share a story about how we nearly prevented an enormous supply chain ransomware attack, which potentially led to the single largest ransomware spree in history and failed. And if you don't know who Victor is, or familiar with Dutch Institute for Vulnerability Disclosure, where Victor has a write-up and publish that we'll get to, and why I'm bringing all this up is very important. So you can dive into the history of Victor over at Darknet Diaries, episode 88, and you'll actually find that Victor spent a lifetime disclosing properly and with full intention of getting things fixed, not exposing, but getting them fixed properly, vulnerabilities found in many, many different products. And he's part of the Guild of the Grumpy Old Hackers, which is episodes 87 and 88 of Darknet Diaries. I just bring those up. I like to offer up some of the further reading of where I first heard about and really some insightful information on how this guild works and what they've done to help bring the bar of security and raise it up. But the other reason that's so interesting is because the CVE assigned and when they were actively engaged with the CVE dates all the way back to April. And they have a whole case update right here on their blog and all this will be linked down below. And this is actually where the problem starts. There was a vulnerability found in the Kaseya VSA product. Now, what is Kaseya VSA? We could probably go back a little further for those of you that don't work in the IT industry. We are a managed service provider, me as in my company, and that's one of the tools that is used is the Kaseya VSA. Now, we use a competing product from SolarWinds. Yes, I'll talk more about them later because they were in the news as well a few months ago. But Kaseya VSA is among the tooling that is used in my industry, so we can manage many systems at scale. This is why they refer to it as a supply chain attack. Now, supply chain means they get into how the systems are being supplied services. Now, they didn't, at least it does not appear, get into Kaseya directly that we are aware of right here on July 6th of 2021. But what this means is they were able to use the Kaseya VSA and it comes in two different flavors. It has the option of being hosted by Kaseya via their software as a service or licensed to host it on-prem. Either way, you're going to rely on Kaseya for updates. And this is why we roll back to this, you know, Dutch notification over here by Victor. They had a flaw in the product and that flaw in the product and a flaw in a tool that works at that scale means that ransomware can be deployed at scale. Now, they have a whole, you know, breakdown of what they did. They were doing responsible disclosure. As I stated, that's the way Victor works and the Dutch CERT team works. So they had assigned it and really got engaged with Kaseya, who they said was responsive. But being responsive and getting it done is two different things. It is very hard to write secure software. That problem is a scaling problem as well. As software becomes more complicated, it will undoubtedly have more flaws. This is why you need to engage third-party pen testing agencies to poke at the software, look for the flaws, and hopefully fix them. And then once you're notified of these flaws, hopefully fix them in a timely fashion. What is a timely fashion? That's going to be, well, up to the lawyers, honestly. It's not up to me. If Kaseya knew about this flaw so many months in advance, was it that hard to fix? Or was it something that they were almost getting ready to patch and the ransomware, our evil group found the flaw before it got patched. These are some of the questions that we still don't really have answers to, but obviously this is something very concerning. And one of the problems in the industry right now is just how fast these companies patch. We, as an IT provider, myself as well, we put our confidence in these tools that we use to help manage systems. That means any of these tools having a security flaw needs to be patched and done right away not delayed not well we'll get to it uh, we want to do a few product releases and updates first to something else 
security has to be a priority because these incidents are absolutely something that happens at scale. Now, for those of you that may have followed my channel previously or all the way back in 2018 when I covered this, yes, I've covered Kaseya VSA because in 2018 it was used to do crypto mining. Now, this is Kyle, uh, CEO of Huntress Labs back in 2018 in the write-up of how Kaseya VSA had a flaw that was exploited and then used to deploy crypto payloads. Times were simpler then. They just wanted to borrow some CPU cycles to, you know, mine a few extra coins. Come that back today, and Huntress was leading the charge on getting us all notified and very detailed breaking down what was happening here. They were looking at it from the outside and, of course, came to the same conclusion, and everyone's now in communication, but they have a similar write-up. They actually posted where they found what appears to be a potential authentication bypass and the potential for SQL injection. Now, they did this by looking at the logs of the infected systems and so they go okay we see through this log through this here now something that threat actors do is actually destroy a lot of logs so this is not easy to obtain hunters had to really reach out to a lot of uh engage with i should say a lot of different msps to find one that had good logs because part of the whole process is don't show people how you did it, makes it harder to patch. And that's the way these different ransomware groups work. But Huntress was really on it for getting on top of things and identifying which IP addresses were used to send the commands, how this whole thing broke down, and really helped get the word out. They really led the charge on this and gave really detailed updates step-by-step step each of the way. This also is something Kaseya was doing on the side over there. They seem to be a little bit less forthcoming about how they were doing it, but they did shut down their servers. They did recommend to their people to shut down their servers. We have a recent statement I'll leave a link to below from their CEO, you know, usual PR statement saying we have lots of customers and only a small number of them were affected type of statement because that's what you expect from large companies. Uh, it, it's a it's a PR thing. You know, love it or hate it, it is what it is. But this type of attack is obviously very scary, very concerning for people like myself who manage and have to rely on these different tools in our industry. And this is one of the things I want to talk about the way forward, because this is something that really concerns me. We do not have the best responsiveness in the industry to these type of attacks. It's not that it's not going to happen. That's probably the one thing is true. It Breaches happen, it's how those breaches are handled. Was it a problem you knew about since April or was it a, wow, no one's seen this coming, that's really clever type of hack? And that's where things get a little bit fuzzy. And the way we help mitigate against these things, one, transparency. These companies should be having full penetration testing done on a regular basis with their products. They make the money to do it. Pen testing, quality pen testing, I should say, is, yes, very expensive. It is also one of those annoying things that the people who work in the business admin side go, hold on, we keep paying these people not to find things. Are they really useful? And, you know, business decisions are made around that. Yes, sometimes they do find things. And that's the whole goal. We want these security testing people, we want the pen testing companies to find these flaws, get them fixed, and keep these software tools secure. This is a problem that was faced earlier, and I covered a video with ConnectWise, and they mishandled essentially their attitude from being told they had some flaws in one of their products by Bishop Fox. I had a video I did on that. And come here, we come all the way here in 2021, we have a completely different response from ConnectWise or even participating in bug bounty programs. That is kind of what we want to see in the market. We want to see these companies go from, hey, I guess we should probably get in this versus downplaying it all, saying it was only some small amount of customers. If you're that small amount of customer, if you are to date the fewer than 60 Kaseya customer, you know, you're just one of the 60 of them that represents 1,500 businesses. This is not small scale. And please note, I don't really have a number for exactly how many endpoints that means, but obviously a small mom and pop shop getting infected with 10 computers is terrible. A thousand systems or 2,000 or even more affected at a single large company, which we know this has shut down some pretty sizable companies. A Swedish grocer was included in the list on there as well. This is a much more serious problem because it's not about which business, the scale and scope of these businesses. And of course, if you're that business, you are deeply concerned and you're asking the questions, what do I do about this? So I'm hoping that this is just one more, I hate to use the word wake up call because isn't that a cliche? And but sometimes it is a wake-up call, and sometimes it is companies like ConnectWise who go, all right, 
this is our new security posture. We're participating in Hacker One. We're going to really take this seriously. And finally, let's talk about Solar Winds, which is also a supply chain attack, but a slightly different one. Now, this is where, in I believe fully, because Solar Winds came out better after the incident. What happened was Solar Winds, specifically Solar Winds Orion, because Solar Winds in a similar way to Kaseya, is a company built by acquisition. When you build your company by acquisition, you slap your name on all the things. So it's SolarWinds Orion, SolarWinds MSP, et cetera, et cetera. The SolarWinds Orion product was attacked, but that then caused an audit of all internal things on SolarWinds, which is great. They re-upped procedures, revamped things, and you end up with a better product. And hopefully Kaseya does the same thing. Kaseya VSA is the specific product they have confirmed was attacked. They've engaged with Mandiant FireEye and are going to be working on a plan and remediation. Now, when they engaged with SolarWinds, that's actually a great thing. Uh, FireEye was a little bit interesting how they became engaged. On December 13th of 2020, FireEye actually announced that they were part of the SolarWinds attack. Well, they more specifically announced that they were attacked in December of 2020, and it turned out SolarWinds was a source, but the source went all the way back to November of 2019. I'll leave a link to the video where I break down the whole timeline because the SolarWinds attack was obviously interesting in scale and also interesting that it went on for so long unnoticed, but it also had a very different goal. The goal of the R Evil ransomware gang is to collect money. So specifically, they're asking for 70 million, like I said. The goal in the Solar Winds incident was espionage, which means as quietly and stealthily as possible, you go through systems and collect information with the goal being espionage, not the goal being deploying ransomware. So they're both technically supply chains attack. The Solar Winds one went up to the supply chain to attack a specific product they knew was deployed by many companies which does include FireEye, which led to their breach, which led to some really good debrief. But the Our Evil Gang is part of the ransomware as a service. And yeah, they're just out to make money. As a matter of fact, if you dig a little bit into them, uh, the reason we're aware so much of the Happy Blog is where they happily post all the different ransoms they're asking from many different companies. They've been around a while. They're not stopping this. And I know there's going to be some people, we need to solve this cryptocurrency problem. And I've seen a CEO make some hints of that from Kaseya. But honestly... That is great. I live in a real world where that exists. I don't know that the world's going to shift dramatically against cryptocurrency and stop the transactions from happening. Once a product has been out there and these attacks scale up like they do, partly, yes, is certainly an enablement to be able to move that kind of money anonymously, but I don't see any easy solution outside of massive changes, but so many places are adopting cryptocurrency that those massive changes are going to be harder and harder to implement every day to get traceability on them. Not saying there's no efforts that should be put towards it, but I live in a world where I know that exists. So we know we have to create security because honestly, if you want to talk about the perfect world, it would be the one where Microsoft updates just work and all the software updates just work. And we don't even need these RMM tools because computers are just magic and there's never a problem with them. But back to the real world that we all live in. All right, leave your thoughts down below on this and hopefully the recovery process, which I know has begun, will go smoothly. Um, one little comment on that, if you spend a little bit of time on Reddit r slash MSP, you will notice that I know one thing that's hampering some of the recovery process is the scale and scope. Some people go, hey, just flip the switch for backups. That's great until you have thousands and thousands of them and you tax the backup servers and the actual restoration process is always a little bit longer than you might expect, but should be something to really consider. It's not just a matter of rolling these back. It is the, you know, the time it takes to do it. And finally, someone may ask, isn't there software that will magically solve all these problems? That's a mixed answer because it really depends on whether or not you excluded everything. Antivirus and firewall exclusions and trusted apps per the Kaseya write-up, if you completely whitelist everything Kaseya does to allow you to get things done, you now kind of neuter the software that you may be using to protect you on it. So there's not like a magic, this absolutely is the way to do it because everything in security is a balance. We use a series of different tools to stack them on top of each other to help provide a comprehensive protection stack. But with any of these, there's balances. I can turn off the computer and claim it's secure, but the reality is I had to use our, we, as I said, we're a SolarWinds user. We had to use SolarWinds to deploy a lot of mitigations against the just recently posted printer problems that thank you, Microsoft, for not 
doing that properly and then causing lots of time and mitigations to fix the printer nightmare issue that was last week's problem, which by the way is still this week's problem. It's just that this is also a problem for a lot of people in the industry. And uh, my heart goes out to all the MSPs that were affected by this. Obviously, it, many of them were doing things right. They were multi-factoring things. Uh, and also a shout out to many of the people in the industry, including Huntress and all the others that participated in one documenting this and getting the word out and other MSPs that are been helping out everyone. So it's been cool that we've seen a lot of community support and hopefully Kaseya at the end of all this comes out better and as a solid program and maybe we'll even see him on Hacker One. That would be pretty cool. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.